Hey, this is Drew with Make It Better, and today we will be trying to install an NVR switch, which is a very common thing for power tools, as you can see here. We'll be taking one of these and installing it on a 70 year old bandsaw. This is a very this is a very old school plug. I don't know when this uh, was changed over, but this has you can see the three wires that are inside of this coming out of the bandsaw. Obviously, the bandsaw is unplugged right now because I've got the plug in my hand. But always make sure that you have any any piece of machinery unplugged. If you're going to be working on electrical, it makes it easy to do when you're working on the plug itself. But you can see, it looks like there's a green, a black, and a red wire. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to have on one side of the back here, it's going to have, there's an in and there's an out. There will be a black wire in here and a black wire down here and a red wire here and a red wire there and the ground wire which is green we should not have to touch at all it should just be running completely through without cutting it and as long as I just put this on correctly it should work let's find out if my hypothesis is correct so right now, the way that I use this bandsaw, I need to take this, plug it in to power strip, and then right now I'm just using the switch here to turn it on and off. So for right now it works. I can use that and keep using that if I want to, but I thought it would be worth trying to install this guy on here and making it a bit safer. Uh, the way these work is if the power gets cut off at all, um, it'll make the machine cut off. You know, currently if I turned this off, it would turn everything off, but maybe I kept this on this switch was kept on and I just turned off the main power here and then as soon as I would turn this on again the saw would come on so that's not very safe so what this will do is make sure that anytime the electricity is cut the saw won't just power on again once the power comes back on so it's a safety measure but there's a certain convenience for it too of just having like a normal power switch installed on my bandsaw so yeah, that's the next step for me in kind of fixing up this bandsaw. And I always get a little bit nervous working with electricity. I guess a disclaimer would be do not do this um, yourself and always hire a certified electrician when appropriate. So this is not me telling you to do this. It's just me doing this so you can see how I'm doing it and hopefully no one gets electrocuted in the process. So I've just done a little bit of measuring, um, doing a little bit of cable management. So I'm gonna be having my cable run up, kind of along here. I'm gonna put another, another little uh, fastener on there. And so this is kind of the, a critical moment now. I've got an idea of the length that I want to use to cut my wire. <sighs> so I'm gonna cut this. I'm not gonna cut all the way through it. I'm just gonna take that outside uh, rubber piece off for right now and look at the wires inside. And then I'll try to only cut the black and the red wires. And if this works the way I think it's supposed to, we should be looking pretty good. You can see 
we're just taking that outside piece off. And we've got a green wire, which is ground, and a red wire, and a black wire. Um, the black, I'm guessing the red is hot, which means this is where the power comes through, and the black would be neutral. Or those could be switched around. For what we're doing, it doesn't really matter. Um, all that is going to matter is that the black goes into the same side of the in. So we've got on my switch. So you can see we've got in and we've got out. So the only thing that really matters is we want to have the black and the red only on one side. So it'll be black, black, red, red, and we're not going to cut the green wire. We'll keep that consistent. So I'm just going to strip off the wires and I'm going to attach these clips on and then we'll be able to plug them right into there. Again, power is removed. So we're going to twist this, and we're going to twist this. All right, so this next step's kind of unnecessary, probably, but I'm just going to actually solder this on. All right, so we've got our connectors all put on here, and now we'll just put them in there, test it out, and see if it works. And hopefully we've got a updated bandsaw with an NVR. I don't know if you can see how that's wired. We've got the red and the black going in, the red and black going out, making sure that the colors are on the same side. So it is wired, but it's not installed. I'm going to clear the workspace and test it out and see if I wired it correctly. This is the nerve wrecking part. I've got it plugged in. You see, we've got power on there. This is running to my NVR, which is wired. And right now we've got no power, which is good. That's what we're wanting. So let's see if this works. And Aurora, my daughter, one of my daughters is watching me make sure I'm doing a good job. Safety first. All right. So ready? Moment of truth. All right. Now let's see what happens when the power gets broken here. So I just tripped that. I have not touched this. So what should happen now is when the power comes back on here, the bandsaw should not start. And we have success. All right. So I'm just gonna finish tidying this up, but this brings a 70 year old bandsaw into a much safer operating uh, procedure so we've got the NVR wired maybe I'll do a quick diagram to show you how I did it again but hopefully this is helpful for anyone else who is in a similar situation where they have an older piece of machinery that they want to make a little bit safer and to do themselves awesome okay friends so I'm going to show you quickly kind of what I did so here is a not actual wiring <laughs> diagram but it maybe will show to some of you who are more visual how i wired it so take a look you can see up here we've got the wire the main plug that's coming and goes into the outlet okay so from there 
all three of the wires inside are together. At this point, we've cut the wires, except for the ground wire, which is in ours here, it'll be blue. So we've got a black wire, we've got a red wire, and a blue or green wire, which is ground. So you can see we've got the in ports, there's two of them, the out ports, there's two of them. All you need to do is make sure that the same wire that goes in to the black wire comes out on the same side. So we've got the black side, we've got the red side, and then my ground wire is not cut. It just goes through to the other side. And on the other side of the NVR, it runs down and goes into my little motor, which causes the blade to spin. So hopefully that helps clear things up for those of you who are wondering what the wiring looks like. I've watched a few of these videos on YouTube. It was kind of helpful to see that other people have wired them, but it was a little bit unclear to me at least what the actual wiring process looked like. I've done some electrical stuff before just tinkering, but we're in New Zealand right now and we're up from 110 volts to 240. So I just want to be <laughs> extra careful. Let me show you real quick uh, what the finished kind of tidied up saw looks like. All right, so here it is tidied up, installed, just like that, okay? So you can see I've got my <coughs> plug coming out of there. This goes down through there and I just built a little box out of wood for it. So now I can plug this in just like that. Make sure my workstation's clear. And then I can use the NVR and make sure the power is on. We got our power on, plug in, and now we can just use the NVR to actually start the saw. <laughs> Well, that's that. Hopefully you found this helpful, entertaining. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll keep making more of this content. Uh, otherwise, take care and have fun. Make something.